Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. If you didn't catch our other video, check it out below. The link is below. We are working on this 1956 Gottlieb Derby Day pinball machine. And this thing is rough, people. So the first video, we just went over the condition that we found it in, and we started taking things off the play field. So we have dismantled the play field. And then we started cleaning the play field, and this thing is destroyed. I mean destroyed. Look at the wear around the pop bumper. Look at the wear around the, the wheel in the center of the machine. I mean, holy crap. It's still a little bit wet from us cleaning it, so it hasn't even dried all the way, but we're going to get dry spots like that all over it. So what are we going to do with this thing? Mm. Stay tuned and we'll find out. But this is what we're starting with. So we're going to see how nice we can make this thing look. So the way I handle stuff like this is I, um, and there's a, there's a million different ways to do it, but this is the way that we do it, okay? We take a paint pen. So you can, you can buy acrylic paint pens. The reason we use acrylic is because you can clean it up pretty easy. So we take a paint pen, and the first thing we do is we go in and we ink back in all the lines that are missing. And that's just a preliminary thing because you're going to have to do it again. The black, the black lines kind of need to be the last thing that you do. But what we do is we do them first just so that basically I'm creating a big paint by numbers book. Right? So I redrew in the little rosette or whatever that you would call it there. Uh, and the way I did that was I took one of our paint bottles you can see the ink on the bottom of it and uh, it matched up with the radius of the little things that were missing and I just traced it in and then used the black to redo the lines the reason I'm doing that is because I'm trying to make a, a, a delineated area that obviously needs to be repainted now right and then the same thing up here is much more severe but all of these arrows the tips of them were worn off so I just paint you know use the paint pen to put them back in. You can use a sharpie too, but oh look, I made a mistake here. That's actually an arrow and I just drew a line, so I'll have to touch that up. You can use a sharpie, but uh, the, the reason that we don't is because those uh, sometimes react badly with the clear coat. Whenever you put the clear coat over the sharpie, the, the ink will actually run. But if we use an uh, acrylic paint, it doesn't do that. Um, yeah, that's... I screwed that all up. I'll have to add the arrow back in. Since it was completely missing, I didn't see it. Um, but basically, I just paint, I just drew all the stuff back in where it goes. And I got this nice curve that was missing here back in there where it goes. Um, got all my lines back. So now I, I, you know, it makes it a lot simpler to see what's going on. So this, you know, purplish color, which is actually that, you know, that purplish color is missing on a lot of that one thing so we can repaint it and be done with that and then this this cream color same thing you can see where it all goes and how everything needs to be the uh, purple is the arrows too so you know it it just comes down to it's like a paint by numbers thing so you're you're basically going to mix up a color uh, and then paint back in everything on the play field that's that color that needs uh, repainted so it just it takes a lot of work, but once you get done, you've got it looking pretty nice. I'm still thinking about, and I've been researching what to do about this bare wood. So the, the you could sand it all off. I could sand off this, but there's so much. I don't want to sand it. You know, I, I just I don't think that's going to work well for me. So what I'm thinking about doing is getting, and I'm not definitely going to do this because I still need to do some research, but getting some light stain and just staining the parts that are bare wood maybe just wipe it in a little bit and see if I can get that to darken up a little bit and then I'll clear it I looked at a video of uh, on our website I mean on YouTube here that I had done in the past where I did a uh, Cleopatra and the Cleopatra had some areas where down between the flippers it was like that it was so it's wood grain and there were parts where after I cleaned it it looked about like that and when I cleared it it did darken that up and it smoothed it out a lot but you could still tell it wasn't perfect though so I may just leave it like that and, and do it that way or I I may try some stain I just haven't decided yet that's pretty scary even thinking about putting stain on the play field but um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm trying to find examples where anybody's ever done that 
but I'm thinking it may be possible that you could take some, some of course, some really light stain like uh, pecan or or uh, maple or whatever, you know, and uh, just rub it in, and it would only absorb into the bare wood. You know, this part that's like this, it wouldn't get it, and it would darken it up a little bit in theory, and then you could let it dry and then clear over it. But I don't, you know, that might not uh that might not be a good idea. <laughs> so I'm going to think about it a little bit, but that, that might be an option. Um, so we did like a preliminary kind of, you know, uh, penciling the stuff in with the, well, we inked it in, inking the, the lines in. And then we're going to start mixing some paint. So uh, I'm going to get the paint pen and fix my mistake there. And then I'm going to uh, see what I can do about maybe mixing up this crazy purple color here first usually that's a pretty good color to mix you you don't have too much trouble usually creating that um, or I guess I could start down here too hmm I think what I want to do with this is you see how there's this area that's lighter there's like a big circle there I guess maybe that was a piece of mylar that was on the play field at some point so I'm gonna match that I'm gonna instead of trying to paint all of it the same color. I'm actually just going to match that so that it, I think it'll look pretty good like that. And then the yellow, see this is another problem you run into. This yellow originally was the same color as that yellow, but it's much lighter now. And the reason it's much lighter is because it's had to pop bumper over the top of it all these years. And this one's been exposed all these years, so it's darkened up. So. Uh, so I can't use that nice bright yellow to paint that unless I painted all of it because it would stick out like a sore thumb. So I kind of need to mix them separately. But uh, I think we'll get into it a little bit. I'll redraw that arrow and then I'll, I'll mix up that color and see what I can do. I might have to repaint all of that in the middle there, the, all of the purple at least. Um, but we'll get into it a little bit. Okay, so looking through our paint, we came across this that we have called Cranberry Wine. You can get all of this stuff at like uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby. It's all like a dollar a bottle or even less. It's just acrylic paint. They make hundreds of different colors. So this one's called Cranberry Wine, and it looks like almost a dead-on match. I mean, just right out of the bottle. Not even have to mix it. You can tell a little bit more through the camera lens that it's a little bit off. Um, I repainted just that one little part and it's almost a perfect match. So you, another thing about m matching colors is that your eye, like a, a human eye, it, some colors it's harder, some colors you'll notice differences more than other colors. So like this purple, they literally, whenever we buy it, well, there's only like four or five different colors of that because they're all pretty similar. You just can't see differences in it too easy. But something like red or yellow, almost impossible to match it right. It just never looks right. Very hard to match yellow, very hard to match red. It just, you'll always see that that's not quite right. So there are certain colors your eye just picks up more. That cranberry color, it looks, you see where I painted half of that? So basically the posts go right here. And over the years they've ate the paint away. Look, I repainted half of it. You can't even tell. It's almost a dead match. So I think that's going to be our color right out of the bottle that we can use to paint some of this stuff. So I'll start putting some of it in and we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Huh? Huh? So here is our cranberry all painted in. It looks pretty good. It's a, it's a neat color too because it's kind of old timey looking. Now, I didn't touch up up here because the wear up there was pretty minor. The 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 wear, most of it's underneath the, where the post goes, so it'll be covered back up once we put the post back on. There's a little bit of wear in front of the targets, but I just left it because if it's that minor, you know, you don't want everything on a play field to look like new paint. I'd rather it have some worn spots, but it was so horribly worn there that we had to paint it back, so... We're getting there, we're getting there. So next up, I believe I'm going to do this orangish red. Um, that's probably your best example of how it originally looked. 
but you can see that it's much more faded out on the actual middle of the play field because it wasn't covered up by the pot bumper. So we are getting there. So that it's a red, but it's it's very orange. It's got a lot of orange in it. So I'm going to have to basically take a red. So I'm going to take this, which is much more red, right? And I'm just going to add orange to it. And somewhere in between, we will get an orangish red that matches that. So I used the, the cranberry I painted the outside lap around with, and then I painted the arrows. And then on the orange, I'm going to have to paint this lap, and then the arrows. And uh, I won't touch those up because it's so minor. There's a little bit of wear there from where the ring is, but when, again, whenever I lay it down, it'll cover most of that up. I'm probably going to have to repaint both of those because that part up there is so bad that it has to be touched up. And that's also going to be the same color um, that's used in these numbers. So I got a little bit of wear there that I'll touch up. And uh, there's a little bit of wear inside of that that needs to be touched up. So that's how you do it. You just go through and you just, it's paint by numbers. You just, you mix one color and whenever you get it right, you just paint it everywhere that that color is. Look, it's used again here. And it was actually used here. And you just, you know, there's only, let's see, there's green. And then this was white originally. So there's green and like a white, right? That's the same color as that. And then there's a yellow. See how the yellow is darker? So that's three, but that's the same yellow as up there. And then there's an orange, which is kind of a red. So that's four, right? And then there's a... Um, the cranberry, so that's five, and uh, that's it. So there's five colors in black, and one of the colors was uh, white. So when they got a little more modern, they got a little more complex, but they silk screened five colors on this and were able to do all this. Look how, look how cool the art is on the horse. They did that with five colors. I guess that's got, no, that's got extra because it's got brown for the horse. Pretty cool. All right, so let's mess with the orange. We painted in the red. It came out pretty good so far. It looks a little flat because it's all flat paint. We haven't clear coated anything yet. And we're doing the yellow now. Like I said, yellow is really hard to do, and you can see how horrible it looks while you're actually painting it in, like the... Uh, you can see all the brush strokes and it's thin and watery looking and it's just it looks horrible but the way basically the, what you do is you just put coat 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 we'll end up putting probably six coats on it and it'll it'll look pretty good then we put a couple coats down on the little rosette or whatever that is um, and you can see that it's blending in pretty decent now that it's starting to dry so uh, we're getting there we did red up here too so it's coming right along so this is what we ended up with before we've done all the clear coat so we put the cream in it's not perfect you can see little I mean you can tell it was done by hand if you look close enough but considering what we started with I'm very very happy I think it turned out pretty nice I like how it, it kind of looks old-timey too it kind of fits the you know what I mean like that part doesn't look newer than the rest of the pin of the play field and then also, of course, we redid this. Um, it's all hard to do because if you if you notice, like this is where one of the shields were, you can see under the post how light it was originally. So we got a pretty good match on that. But then it yellows just from light, you know. And uh, so what are you matching? Are you matching that or that or up there where it was darker or where it's worn? It's just it's hard to get a good match on it. But it looks decent, right? So we sprayed some clear on it, and the way we do it on, on stuff like this, you know, this is not a collector's quality machine, obviously, <laughs> right? The thing is destroyed. So the way we do it is we just use a rattle can of clear coat. So it's it's literally just clear coat that you can buy in a can, Krylon clear, clear coat. So we get it nice and clean and then clear it. So we sprayed two coats of clear on it already, 
and uh, we decided not to stain the wood around it because I think it would just make a big mess and you you just complicate things. So the wear is actually kind of natural the way it was. So we thought, well, to hell with it. Let's just clear it. And so it's kind of smoothed it out a little bit. We've only got two coats on it right now, but I'm going to put a ton of coats on it because I'm basically, I want to try to get it where these inserts are more level. They're a little sunk. The, 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 the two coats of clear we have on it already has done a pretty good job of smoothing it out, but you can still tell where the inserts are. So when the ball rolls over it, now the best, the proper way to do it, of course, is to take everything off the play field, block sand it down, do a couple, do a coat or two, let it dry, block sand it some more. But, you know, honestly, we just don't have the time to put all that effort into something this old that really doesn't have a ton of value in it. So we're just trying to save it, make the thing nice and playable, and uh, get it where it looks pretty good and it's presentable, and somebody will be happy to have this in their collection. So what I'll do is we're going to uh, put some more coats of clear on it, and uh, then we'll, of course, repopulate the play field. I went about the like the switches and stuff, even though we cleared it with the switches and stuff still on it. We just try to mask it off, so we we hold some like you know a lot of times we'll just hold something up to it when we do it. It's you know quick and dirty. We're not trying to make it perfect. Um, there's even an area here that I didn't touch up the paint. It had a little bit of wear, just so that it you know it kind of matches the wear of it. There's no need to go crazy and try to make the thing look brand new, because it's not. Do I need to remind you of this? It is not brand new, people. But it's looking pretty good. So we'll put some more clear on it and see how flat we can get those inserts. And then we'll also um, start putting the play field back together after we get the clear done and uh, see how good we can get it looking. Maybe I can get it plugged up too where the lights are working. Oh, another thing. Whenever we're clear coating and stuff, we just leave the old bulbs in because that way you don't get anything down in the um, sockets or any trash down in there. So looking pretty good i'm happy with it so far i'll uh i'll put some more clear on it i'm, I'm gonna try to put like eight or nine coats on it just to get it to see if that i've never tried that putting a ton of clear on it so i don't know if it'll if it'll level out you know because it's kind of self-leveling i don't know if it'll level out the paint you know the brush strokes and all of that uh, better if you put more coats or if you'll still be able to tell just as bad as whenever there's only a couple coats and then also uh, I don't know if it'll make it too soft you've got a little bit that you have to worry about the, the reason people use automotive clear coat is because it's really hard which is good but on an old machine like this I don't know if that's really all that necessary because I mean you're not you don't have ramps or anything like that the ball really isn't moving all that fast so we do what we can but we'll put some more clear on it and I'll come back and show you what that looks like. So this is what we ended up with. We um, put everything back on it, repopulated it after we put, like we said, about eight coats of clear on it. So I'll show you, I'll let the, I'll show you, there's a couple things I want to show you. Okay, so look how our wood with all the clear has evened out pretty well it looks weathered and a little worn but it's not it's nowhere near as bad as it was so it really came out pretty good once we put a lot more clear on it so it kind of darkened it up it darkened up the light spots and it you know smoothed it in really happy with that also the 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 thick clear made the um, uh, the paint look it kind of just blended all the colors in a little bit so it, it it darkened the paint a little bit and just made it look a little older so it doesn't look like it's brand new you know so I'm really happy with that so the other problem that I always have and I have this problem on on games um, I don't know what that is I have problems on games that I touch up all the time is whenever you've got like heavy wear around inserts your problem is after you paint the uh, or anywhere you've got it where it's worn down to the wood after you put the paint in it's not the same level like you'll you'll see where the where the uh, paint's not as thick as the original paint because whenever you clear it you're putting clear on top of the original and on top of your new paint and it just you can always see like a little indention where it the new paint is 
So that's a problem on every machine I do. So on this particular one, it was worn so bad that all of these inserts were sunk. And you can see that they're still sunk just a little bit. You can even see some wax that's gotten caught in the, the little uh, line around the insert. But once we put, and of course the wax is on top of all the clear coat, but once we put seven or eight uh, levels of clear on it, it filled in and kind of leveled itself. So I'll let the light hit it so you can see what I'm talking about. See how, like for instance right here, see see all of this? See how you've got different levels there? That's because part of this still has the original lacquer on it and part of it was bare wood. So whenever you clear it, you're putting clear on, you don't get rid of that, but you get rid of it slightly with every coat. Every coat, it kind of self levels. So the, the proper way to do it is to spray it with something hard that you can sand. So if you sprayed it with automotive clear coat, you could sand it after a coat or two, get it nice and flat, and then spray it again. And then you could do it again and then and again. And eventually you would get it nice and smooth and it'd be perfectly perfectly clear. I mean a perfectly level. Now on a on a game like this, I don't think it's as necessary, but with all of those inserts, we didn't want it to be too sunken. But if you this is the type of stuff that you're gonna run into if you do it like we did it, where you just touch up. That's another good one. See you can see the light reflecting there there's a little bit of variation between where my new paint is and where the original paint is. You can see that it's just not perfectly flat. But this is the best one that we've been able to accomplish. Oh, uh, down here, remember it was all screwed up down here. So see how you can tell where the original wear was like around those inserts? See all of that? That's where the paint was completely gone. Now I repainted that in and I repainted this in, but I'm just showing you that when, it, when it's worn down to the wood, You've worn through the clear coat too, so that that area, whenever you paint it back, it never gets back up level where it was. But if you put a bunch of coats of clear on it, it fills most of that most of that in. So this is pretty smooth. I can feel it just a little bit. But if if you if you get a uh, like a really nice machine from the 70s that that's still in pretty good original shape. You can fill the inserts like that. You'll fill them just a little bit. And they play great like that. So it's not that big of a deal. So I'm really happy with how that came out. And then you can see how you get a nice gloss on it once you uh, once you wax it up. Um, it, it might be even a little bit too glossy. I don't know if I would have purposefully made it like that. But once the clear was going on top of itself, it just got really glossy. So uh, I think that came out excellent. Though I mean I'm I'm shocked that it looks this good, and uh, around the horse up there, you saw how it you know kind of had a really worn appearance, but it kind of smoothed out with all the clear. It just it 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 kind of got the colors looking good where it, it almost looks like that it's just uh, grained wood. So the other thing uh, regarding painting that I wanted to show was that we talked about in the first video. That we were going to redo the rails so we redid the rails and uh, I think they turned out great too I'd never refinished um, any rails before but if you saw in the other videos we had heavy wear right here where just all the lacquer was gone and it looked horrible so what we did was we took the cigarette holders off we sanded it all down to bare wood which was super simple to do um, and all we did was the rail both side rails and the lockdown bar. So we just sanded it down to bare wood, got it nice and white again. Um, I've heard that these are like maple, but I don't know that for sure. Um, sanded it down to bare wood. We didn't go crazy. You see all these little marks in it? We left all that. I mean, we didn't go, we didn't go nuts and get rid of every little imperfection. We just tried to get rid of some of the, the old lacquer and the, the worn look. So once we did that, we had a problem where the wood was it looked new. Just the same problem we had on the play field. It was all white. So we were going to have a problem if we just cleared it that it wouldn't match any of this other wood. So here's how the, the rails looked up near this end where they were uh, still had the original lacquer on them. And so what we did was we got just a little bit of stain. Uh, fruit wood is the color. So we got a little bit of fruit wood stain, rubbed it on the wood, um, it dark it yellowed it up just a little bit and then we cleared it with poly and uh, put two coats on it and it matched look how look how well that matches 
it's not perfect but man it really looks pretty good and so if you ever have to match one that fruit wood is really close at least to these gotlibs so wow i think it, i think it came out pretty good and uh on the play field we still got issues like some of these things didn't completely clean up um, with the evaporust but they look pretty good we got new pop bumper caps from uh pinball resource the ones up there uh, are still the originals uh, we re-inked with a sharpie the <laughs> number one number two number three and number four on the targets something like that that's your really your only option I mean, they don't make those new or anything um, we re-inked the numbers on the top of the pop bumper caps you can get those new but the caps themselves were in pretty good shape um, but yeah we're really happy with it and you can see how good the uh, the um, um, plastics look I think this let's see I think I can hit it and it'll alternate yeah so these lights alternate but you can see that the plastics came out really nice pinball rescue makes those they rock but yeah we're really happy with the play field we think that came out really nice here's some of the old stuff off of it that was the pop bumper skirt down at the bottom of course we put a new one on and then these are what's left of our plastics our original plastics look at that good lord here's one of our original pop bumper caps and then it had, one of them had been replaced in antiquity so let's see here so this is like completely coming apart. So you tell me if it was worth the hundred bucks for new plastics. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And we put new flipper uh, shoes on it. So I think it came out pretty good. Now we're going to do another video, which. I'm sure you can figure out we've already started uh, where we show you like the electronics we're gonna work through the electronics of it and get this sucker playing again so stay tuned for the next video the third video on the derby day so we'll have that up soon and uh, it'll show how these things are designed and how the electronics work and what's going on in the back box and all that stuff so uh, leave your comments below let us know how you think the play field turned out considering where we started from and again, we're not trying to act like we're artists or anything. We're just saying we're trying to save this old pinball machine. So leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film all this for you instead of just doing it and keeping it to ourselves. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.